What's up, Technobo here for Server Pro, and welcome to this complete crash course for CurseForge Minecraft mod packs. CurseForge is a mod hosting platform for multiple games, including Minecraft, and is the home for a plethora of mod packs, from the biggest to the smallest. So, how do we get started? Well, first of all, we need to download and install the CurseForge client. To do this, head across to the link in the description down below, download.curseforge.com. When you get to this page over here, simply click Download for Windows. After the file finishes downloading, click on it to open it up, and if prompted for administrator, click Yes. From here, we'll be running through the basic installer. Select a language, click Next, choose an install location if you'd like to change it, and I'll be creating a desktop shortcut for CurseForge. Read and accept the Overwolf Terms and Privacy Policy, and click Next. After the installation completes, simply click Launch. After the program launches up, you can safely skip the intro unless you'd like an extra crash course on how to use the software. I'll be showing you everything here. If you have Minecraft installed, you'll see it appear on this list over here with Installed written underneath it. I don't have Minecraft installed, but that's no issue. I'll click Minecraft and we're taken to this page over here. We can choose Standard, Recommended, or we can choose a custom folder that we'd like to place CurseForge mod packs into. I'll be leaving this as Standard and clicking Continue. From here, your Minecraft will be prepared and you'll be able to start downloading mod packs. If I head across to Browse Mod Packs at the very top, I'll be able to get more mod packs. The My Mod Packs section over here is where you can access currently installed mod packs, customize them, and manage them. On the Browse Mod Packs page, I'll go ahead and sort by, say, Popularity, and I'll be downloading one of the most popular mod packs here, say, RLCraft. I'll click Install to the right hand side of the name, and immediately it'll start to download. Depending on your internet speed, this could be slow or fast. And once it's done installing, you'll see a play button appear. But for now, I won't be playing this. In fact, I'll click on the mod pack, either inside of the Browse Mod Pack section or the My Mod Pack section, and it takes you to the same page. In here, you can read information about the mod pack, see a changelog, screenshots, version history, where you can choose a previous version of the mod pack, as well as some extra information about the mod pack itself. Something you'd usually want to do is give a mod pack more RAM. We can do this by opening settings in the bottom left, then clicking on Game Specific Minecraft, and inside of here, we have a bunch of customizable options. We can choose a preferred release branch, set a game resolution, choose what happens to the launcher when the game starts, enable debugging, and of course, allocate more RAM, choose a Java version, and add additional arguments down here. Now, of course, the more RAM that the game has, the better it performs up to a certain point. But of course, you don't want to give your game everything and leave nothing for Windows and the rest of your programs. Though the amount that you set here is going to be highly dependent on the kind of computer you have. Keep at least, say, 20% extra of your total RAM for your PC to continue working properly. From here, we can close out of it and go back to the Mod Packs page. If you'd like to host a server as well, you can click the three dots and you'll see a Download Server Pack button, as well as a View Mod Pack Website button that'll help you set up the actual server itself. Of course, if you'd like to see specialized tutorials, you may find some on our channel. And from here, there's not much else to do other than clicking Play and starting up the actual game itself. It'll open up the default Minecraft launcher, where you'll be asked to sign in if you haven't already, and after signing in, you'll be able to click Play once again. Inside of the Minecraft launcher, all you have to do is make sure that the mod pack is selected as the version over here, and you're able to click Play. If you'd like to customize it further, you can click the installations at the very top, click the three dots next to the mod pack's name, edit, and we can edit some more options in here. And once we're done, we can simply launch up the game itself. Upon accepting and clicking play once again, Minecraft may choose to download a couple more files in order to work properly, but eventually the game will open up. Depending on the mod pack size, your computer speed, and the number of mods that it has to load, this could be quick or very, very long. And there we have it, we're on the main menu. From here, we can start playing, etc, etc. But instead, I'll be quitting out of the game for now and heading back to the CurseForge Minecraft section. Inside of the Minecraft section, you can see our currently installed mod packs, and you have some filters to sort and filter through all of your installed mod packs. If we click on an installed mod pack, we'll be taken to the same details page, but this time, if we click the three dots from the My Mod Pack section, followed by the actual mod pack itself, you'll see some extra options here, including profile options, 
which lets us customize per installation settings like we did previously for all of them. We can customize the name, choose content management, choose to use system memory settings from the other global Minecraft tab, and of course, choose some more settings here, like choosing a specific forward version and choosing a preferred release branch. If we click the three dots again, we also have the option to open folder. If we'd like to install something like Optifine. And at the very bottom, you see the delete profile option. When you're eventually done playing through a mod pack, you'd probably want to come and delete them eventually, as they can take up quite a bit of hard drive space, depending on how big the mod packs actually are. And with that, that brings this tutorial to a close. You now know how to use CurseForge to improve your Minecraft modding experience. Upon exiting CurseForge for the first time, you'll also be prompted on whether you'd like to hide CurseForge, exit it completely, or exit it and Overwolf, a second piece of software installed by the CurseForge launcher. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And if you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!